Hello everyone and welcome back to my all country tour in Microsoft Flight Sim where I flew over every single country on the planet during the Olympics during Twitch live streams. So these flights were from a little while back and I've edited them for YouTube. And this first flight is the 16th flight in the series and it is going from Lago to Cape Town. As you can see there, a flight of 3,295 nautical miles and it will take two hours and 51 minutes thanks to the fact that I am flying the F-111, which can go Mach 2.5. You can see on the map there, there was a little detour for Sao Tome and Principe. Uh, I have to get all the little island nations in as I take off here from Nigeria, the NMM being the airport, and there is the F-111 flying briskly. And this is Lagos. So I did a flyover of Lagos since I didn't do that coming in. Well, I didn't show it off coming in and we get to take a look at it on the way out and this is how it looks in Microsoft Flight Sim. We will see how it looks in Flight Sim 2024. Hopefully it'll look better. I'll, honestly Lagos doesn't look as bad as the surrounding areas uh, as we can see here and part of the reason for this flight is to see which areas are better off and which areas are worse off as far as the photo scenery is concerned. And it doesn't take too far out from Lagos before we hit really muddy scenery, blurry stuff. As you can see there, the coastline of Nigeria not getting much love here. As I accelerate to Mach 2, Benin City, as you can see on the Sky for Sim map there, is in fact in Nigeria, not in Benin, worth noting. As I head towards Cameroon. And here over Cameroon. Cameroon also does not get much love as far as the photo scenery is concerned. Um, it's pretty much one of the worst countries as far as the photo scenery as far as I could see. Unless maybe the internet wasn't working quite right and giving me the right stuff. Of course that's always a possibility but I think this is what it is. Uh, you can see uh, just uh, blurry textures down there. Which is interesting because other places in the world like Somalia which are you know not very easily accessible by aerial photography still have better results so anyway Cameroon hopefully will get improvements as I make the turn towards Equatorial Guinea though we have to get that little detour to Sao Tome and Principe so first I get Equatorial Guinea that little rectangular country right at the equator in Africa as you can see here making sure to fly over that but before I get to Gabon I head towards Sao Tome and Principe off the west coast of Africa, making sure that they get a flyover as well. This is of course a custom livery for the F-111 for this purpose. That's my custom tail insignia and also I put the Olympic rings on the side of it. And that's how the F-111 looks nose on. I like the downward, apparent downward tilt of the wings. Might be the angle, but I think that they have a slight downward tilt. As we make a turn here, flying over this, I forget whether it's Sao Tome or Principe, I don't know which island is which, but we flew over the country in some way or another, and I'm making a big turn back to Gabon. And as you can see there, once again, this plane at speed at past Mach 2 tends to have a turning radius of about 40 nautical miles, so it takes a bit for it to turn as I hit the coast again and I have to make another turn to head down the coast. You can see that I'm past Mach 2.2, Mach 2.25 there as I continue on down and we're headed towards the Republic of Congo and then there's the Democratic Republic of Congo formerly known as Zaire. So at this point I'm over the Republic of Congo. I know it doesn't show on the map there, but we are. And then there's sort of a disputed area between the Republic of Congo and the Democratic Republic of Congo. And then there's the Democratic Republic of Congo. So somewhere around here is the Congo River and I look for it on the map, making sure that the river I see is in fact the Congo River. You can see Congo there. There we go. And that is the river in front of us. Now, although it's not too far away, I don't fly over the capital of the Democratic Republic of the Congo, which is Kinshasa, a fairly famous city. Uh, but even though I'm only clipping a tiny little corner of this country right now, I do fly over the northeast corner of it later in this video in a different flight. So here I'm crossing over into Angola. 
and this video contains flights 16, 17, 18, and 19, and we'll eventually get all the way to Dubai by the end of it. Angola didn't seem to have many interesting features, so I decided to play GeoGuessr. I'm doing this with two monitors, so I still have the game visible to me uh, while doing GeoGuessr. It's just that it won't be visible to the Twitch live stream viewers, but on the second stream screen I did GeoGuessr, and that's what you see there. That was my pastime while I was flying, and after a while I was in Namibia, which had somewhat more of an interesting landscape. At least there was more settlements around and it seemed to be more detailed in terms of the photo scenery, and generally got more detailed the closer to South Africa we got. As you can see here, somewhat of an increase in detail, com certainly compared to Cameroon earlier. And then as we get further south, it gets better and better. We got these streaks in the landscape, which was very interesting. We saw streaks in the desert before, but these were sort of different. Uh, these grooves are probably alluvial, but how does that happen exactly? I mean, is a river sort of progressively going from one end to another? I don't know. But uh, before it was more dunes, they were actually higher up. These are grooves lower down so they're probably formed by rivers and yep a much more detailed landscape here now and then finally in South Africa where I plan to land at Cape Town here everything looks really good it's a very varied landscape and we're going to cross South Africa going from west to east because uh, the country is over on the East Lesotho and Eswatini so we're going to get to see quite a lot. Well, I got to see quite a lot of it. You're going to get to see the edited version. Sorry about that. So anyway, Cape Town in front of us. Landing at the airport here. Oop, not quite lined up there. And it turns out I was off to one side quite a bit. It's going to happen more than once in this video. I always activate that nose wheel steering. Eventually I map it to a key. Alright, and I actually had Pekka accompanying me on this flight, so his plane is in front there. And off to the side as I park as well. So, in I come. And with that flight complete, after 2 hours and 51 minutes, 3,295 nautical miles, I really realized that I could go a little bit further than I originally plotted. This is the original plot landing in Madagascar. But I eventually figured out that we seem to have more fuel than I was thinking that we would have. The stated range was 3,500 nautical miles, uh, but with the weapons bay fuel, we seem to be getting quite a bit more. So I extend to the first bit of the next flight as well, which is to Mauritius. And as a result, this is a flight from FACT in Cape Town to FIMP in Mauritius, which is 3,493 nautical miles. That'd be 43, my handwriting is not good. Uh, and three hours and seven minutes on August 6th. So, flying out of Cape Town, right out of Cape Town, there's some nice mountains here. So that was very pleasant. Haven't gotten too much scenery really over Africa so far. And they've really done a lot of detail here in South Africa, but well, the rest of the continent is definitely lacking. I felt that the northern end was pretty good. The desert definitely had a lot of features. But the middle part needs a lot more. So here entering Lesotho, which is completely surrounded by South Africa. It is an independent country, very rugged from the look of it. And of course has an Olympic team. Um, and Esotini, I used to remember it as Swaziland uh, back in the day, but they changed the name of it. So it is in the northeast corner of South Africa, and it too is a little country. Not as little as some of the ones in Europe, mind you, like Monaco from six, but anyway. <laughs> and then I made a turn to Botswana, though we cut across a bit more of South Africa first. Botswana, of course, uh, brings to mind the, well, what was then the Top Gear episode where they crossed it. And Hammond May and Clarkson from Top Gear recently did their last episode of Grand Tour crossing Zimbabwe. And so we're only getting a little corner of Botswana here and we're gonna get a little bit more of Zimbabwe. But 
here's Botswana, well, right along the border of Botswana and Zimbabwe. I'm tempted, tempted to actually drive a car in flight sim across Botswana. I, I'm tempted to do that. Of course, I will not face the obstacles they did. Um, maybe in Flight Sim 2024, I would face more obstacles because apparently the the terrain is deformable and has different properties. But anyway, in Botswana at Francistown, I turned towards Zimbabwe, so I had flown over a reasonably large city there, and then in Zimbabwe, turned up towards Zambia, and so this is part of the terrain that in Grand Tour they went through, and this is the lake that they boated on carrying their cars as well, the one between Zimbabwe and Zambia. And here we are in Zambia. I decided to fly over its capital, be well, besides its capital since it was along the way, and then turn towards Mozambique basically. And after a little bit of Mozambique we fly over Malawi and then more of Mozambique. So entering Mozambique here, and again, generally the southern part of Africa seems to be well detailed, but the central part not so much. Oddly, the Sahara Desert looks a lot better than the central part of Africa. So Malawi, with Lake Malawi as a major feature, and then turning in Mozambique, towards Comoros, which is one of those island nations that you gotta remember. Yep, uh, so here we are. I forget what the city is here in Mozambique that we are approaching. Uh, it's got a bay there, and then Comoros is an island there, or a bunch of islands really. There's a French territory below that, which we don't actually have to fly over because it's part of France. But I do fly over it anyway. It looks a lot better than Comoros. Comoros had, uh, again, a lackluster textures, but they did a better job on the French territory. And here is Madagascar. I didn't end up flying over the capital of Madagascar. And with the new version of the Bijan Habashi tree pack that I have in, I look forward to checking out the baobab trees in Madagascar when I can. But after Madagascar, it was a long, bit, long stretch of sea to get to Mauritius. Reunion is also a French territory. I didn't fly over it. So Mauritius up ahead and I of course slow down, extend the wings and the, the textures on Mauritius aren't great unfortunately. It didn't get much love it seems but anyway at least we get to land here. It's got a decent sized airport. And so after I take a look at the island, I make my landing at the airport in Mauritius, which is FIMP, three hours and seven minutes after takeoff. And touchdown. Now, of course, the Sky for Sim thing gives you a lot of information, including the time, the constant UTC time, as well as the ground speed and everything. All right, parking. It didn't give me a little blue box this time. Anyway, that was flight 17, and this is flight 18 from FIMP to HAAB Addis Ababa in Ethiopia. Unfortunately, the best flight path to get me through a bunch of countries, including Burundi and Rwanda, did not allow me to go over Nairobi, uh, which I had a bunch of scenery there for, and uh, just generally scenery in Kenya, so I had to pass on that. But Flying at the height that this flies at, probably I didn't, wouldn't get a uh, very good view. So anyway, out from Mauritius and turning around in the Indian Ocean here towards the places we need to go. But before we get to go back to mainland Africa, we do have another island nation to fly over. As you can see, some of the sad textures on Mauritius over to the left there. Uh, that island nation is the Seychelles, as you can see on the map. Yes, we will cover the Seychelles. I promise, I, I try my best to not miss anything. All countries, really, seriously. Uh, so here we are with the Seychelles. That's what they look like. And then, I don't know if it's a they or whether it's actually one. I assume that if it's plural that there's more than one island involved, but I flew over one. Uh, anyway, turning back to mainland Africa, 
I aimed for Tanzania, which we had not flown over yet. Actually, I aimed for the bottom corner of Kenya first at Mombasa. And this is my way of covering Kenya since I won't be able to get to Nairobi. So I'm just getting the southern corner of Kenya here. And as a result, I, w I wasn't flying over Dar es Salaam, which is a big city in Tanzania and Zanzibar City. But we will be seeing Mount Kilimanjaro, which is good, and flying over a big chunk of Tanzania otherwise. So, but this part, that part was uh, Kenya, and then now we're entering Tanzania, and that is Mount Kilimanjaro. So, one of the sources of the Nile, I think. But there are other sources of the Nile, because there are a lot of tributaries of the Nile. So, it's just uh, which source is the furthest away from the mouth of the Nile is what Dr. Livingston was trying to find, I guess. Anyway, Lake Victoria over there as we cruise along in Tanzania, head to Burundi. And this is Burundi. And mainly in Burundi, I was making a big turn towards Rwanda. <laughs> so that is what I'm doing here. Again, wide turning radius. So a little bit extra Burundi. The texture is not so good here anymore. And then on into Rwanda. Yeah, actually, Mount Kilimanjaro did not look particularly great either. So, but this is once again Central Africa. So, that ba when I say Central, I mean in latitude, not like in the middle. So, the Central latitudes of Africa seem to be seem to be a little bit blurrier as far as the textures are concerned. Uganda maybe not as bad as Rwanda and Burundi and Tanzania. But here we are over Uganda. And then on to Central African Republic. Actually, you can see South Sudan right there, but I go over the Democratic Republic of Congo, over to Central African Republic, and then come around to fly over South Sudan. That's just how it is. So here we, here we are once again, as promised, over Democratic Republic of Congo slash Zaire, and then uh, Central African Republic here, Going over that, don't know much about Central African Republic at all, but here we are, just this little corner. Sorry about doing little corners all the time, but it is the optimal flight path under the circumstances, and it was a long enough trip, <laughs> trust me, it was, I mean, you don't have to trust me, I'm showing you all the details, but uh, yeah, this particular flight was super long, this was 4,119 nautical miles, and Initially, it was two different flights when I first planned it, but I combined the flights once I realized what the range of the plane was. As we fly over Juba in South Sudan, this is the capital of South Sudan. And so this flight was three hours and 46 minutes, with the F-111 going full tilt most of the time. Well, that's South Sudan for you, and this is Ethiopia. Way green, <laughs> way green. Not too sure about the color matching of everything, but anyway, Ethiopia looking green here, but much more yellow as we approach Addis Ababa, its capital. And so wings extended as I approach for landing for the conclusion of flight 18. The next flight was also a combination of two flights, as we'll see. So fields outside of Addis Ababa. I definitely wanted to get a look at the city. I don't think I've ever flown over Addis Ababa in the sim. So once I found out that the clouds were in the way, I decided to get rid of them. <laughs> so mostly I'm doing it with real-time weather, unless unless there's specific sites I want to see, especially cities, and then I clear the weather up. So that is Addis Ababa for you. Good-looking city. And coming in for a landing here. And I was way off to the left suddenly. This was not good. It was even worse than the other one. Eek. But after a 3 hour and 46 minute flight, I definitely wanted to sit down and not abort that landing. So I did. I'm sure I had enough fuel to go around, but still. Okay, parking here. And then the final flight for this video, which occurred on August 8th. 
and that is a flight from HAAB, but not as plotted, not as you see there, because I combined this with the next flight. I originally wanted to fly into Cairo, but we have so much range that I decided I could fly the next flight with this one, and that led me to Dubai, to OMDB. So the flight ended up being 3,932 nautical miles direct. And well, unfortunately, no landing at uh, Cairo, but it's much more efficient this way as far as the timing. Landings take a while. So uh, from Ethiopia, I head towards Somalia. And yeah, things looking decent around here. And Somalia actually looks reasonably good. Uh, that's there's still Ethiopia in front of us, but Somalia doesn't look too much different. So yeah, I, I, I don't know how all this photo scenery stuff works, but here's Somalia for you. Looking, you know, not looking muddy. It's looking pretty good. The photo scenery experts seem to like deserts. Go figure. But here I am turning towards Djibouti. A famed country in the annals of middle schoolers everywhere, I guess. Well, maybe not everywhere, maybe just in English speaking areas, but anyway, Djibouti, everyone. And then I made a turn to Yemen because I didn't want to go through all of Saudi Arabia to get to Yemen later on. We were just gonna go across the Red Sea or the Strait here and head towards Yemen right now, get a little bit of Yemen in, and then come across the Red Sea again to Eritrea. Yemen uh, surprisingly has a lot more people than I expected. And I just remember that vividly when I was... Uh, during the flight I uh, discussed little, some details of each country, mainly their Olympic team, uh, but also mentioned their population. And Yemen has 33.7 million people, so pretty darn substantial. And here I am turning around in Yemen, just flying over the western bit of it, and then head towards Eritrea. So back over to Red Sea with Eritrea in front of us. And this is Eritrea. Rugged, desert, yeah. What can I say? It's, it's definitely desert, but the textures look good. And this Sudan. I didn't fly over Khartoum in this case. I previously flew over it uh, and actually landed at it in my F-104 circumnavigation flight, which I haven't continued because I actually lost the flight files that a drive died, and so I have to redo those flights, which sort of sucks. So that's why I haven't posted more of the F-104 circumnavigation. I lost a bunch of flights, and now I have to redo them. And, and well, it wasn't higher up on my priority list, let's put it that way. Anyway, so there is Lake Nasser and the Nile River and all that business. The thin thread of the Nile River and then the wider part as we get closer to the mouth of the Nile with Cairo there. And there's the pyramids, if you can see them near the nose right now. Oop, I'm switching the camera around, but they're there. The pyramids are there. So all right, we got a pyramid sighting as we flew over Cairo but I did not land at Cairo. So onward, the Suez Canal, very prominent here. We did not block it. The Panama Canal, I, I still haven't gotten the special scenery for that. I do want that. And Sinai had this very definite line across it. And I wonder if that's how it really is or whether it's an artifact. I assume that's how it really is, but it's really interesting. Anyway, on through the Sinai Peninsula and of course well the country status of Palestine is a whole thing but they didn't have an Olympic team so I made a point to fly over it and so here Gaza in front of us very dense um, it's very very clearly dense and then the farmland on on the right hand side past the border is uh, like on a completely different scale so that's that's Gaza right there the subject, obviously, of many unfortunate headlines. Very definite border with uh, Egypt as well. And of course, after flying over Gaza, I'll fly over Israel. 
and then I have to turn over to Jordan. So that Gaza behind us as we fly over Israel and over Jerusalem though I didn't get a particularly good sighting of Jerusalem and the angles were just a bit wrong I think and we're high up so it's tough but here turning towards Jordan uh, and we'll fly over Amman in Jordan there's that city under the plane right now and then turn towards Syria Unfortunately, the scenery was loading in a patchy way at this point, so the quality might not be up to snuff. Or, well, it's trying, but it's not quite there sometimes. But anyway, that's Amman, Jordan. And then the turn towards Syria. Let's cross the border there, and we'll fly by Damascus on our way into Lebanon. This could do at least with some color matching there, if that's really how it looks like. I know Syria photo scenery is probably hard to come by, but um, at least the color matching can be done, potentially. But that is Damascus, or at least what I could see of it. And then on to Lebanon and Beirut. So Lebanon, also in the news lately. Uh, not so prominent at the time I actually did the flight. And Beirut behind us, I headed towards Cyprus, which is actually the last part of Europe that I had not covered. Getting it as part of this flight. Cyprus actually looks pretty good from this angle. From a lot of angles. It's an interesting island. So out to Cyprus and here over Cyprus we see it's reasonably detailed. There's some fuzzy bits. There's some fuzzy bits. It's not quite as crisp as some other areas as far as the photo scenery is concerned, but not horrible. And as I turn around, a big turn here, and then head back towards the Middle East, towards Syria. That ridge on the northern part of Cyprus is very interesting. Wonder if there's good gliding there. <laughs> anyway. Uh, towards Syria here and of course the next country that I hadn't covered was Iraq and so I'm cutting across Syria once again to head to Iraq Syria looking better in this area maybe potentially I think maybe the first flight over Damascus wasn't so good anyway Iraq looks like that very dry at least this part but of course the tri Tigris and Euphrates are in the background I didn't fly directly over to Tigris and Euphrates. That would have been a little bit greener. But I head this way to get down to Saudi Arabia, which I haven't technically flown over yet. And But first Kuwait, of course. Kuwait here. And Kuwait City in front of us there. And then turning along the Persian Gulf Coast towards Saudi Arabia. Iran I had done on the way into Europe. But I have to aim for Bahrain there. Very important to get all the island countries in, and Bahrain is one of those. But here is Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia covering this part of it. And that's Bahrain. Fairly well detailed. Lots of those finicky little artificial islands they've got there. Qatar does not look quite so good. Um, don't know what's going on with Qatar. I mean, Doha is a very famous city. That's in front of us right there, but it's just sort of dusty. There's some tracks over to the right there, though. Something going on over there. But, yeah, not the best rendition of Doha from this height, but maybe when, it, when I go lower, it'd be a little bit better. Anyway, after that, I cut across the Persian Gulf to get to the Euro United Arab Emirates and Abu Dhabi is below us there. And of course, I'm landing at Dubai at OMDB. So that's a flight of 3,932 nautical miles from Ethiopia. It took 3 hours and 27 minutes as I turn here. And then there are a bunch of those artificial islands, including that world map one. And of course, the Burj Dubai or Burj Khalifa. There we go. Buzzing the tallest building. And then coming in for a landing. 
So that was flights 16, 17, 18, and 19. There are 25 flights altogether. I think there'll be two more videos in the series for the all country tour. That was touchdown at Dubai. And so as I taxi it in and park, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.